Welcome everybody to yet another edition of Blacks in Motion right here at BVN at 8. And as always, it's your sports guy Cliff here giving you the hottest news out there in sports right now. Now, as much as I want to go ahead and leap into basketball because football season is over, I guess I have to give a small Super Bowl recap. And yes, I'll be the first one to admit it when I'm wrong. I was wrong. The Super Bowl was totally not what I thought it was going to be. I predicted that the Panthers were pretty much going to whoop on the Broncos. But it wasn't necessarily the other way around, but the Broncos did come out on top. Congratulations to Peyton Manning and the Broncos. They won 24-10. Behind the play of MVP outside linebacker Von Miller. Look, this guy right here was all over the field. Strip sacking, which resulted in a touchdown. He couldn't be blocked. I mean, who would have known? You know, the Panthers are pretty good. Their offensive line is pretty good. But who knew that their offensive tackles could not block Von Miller or DeMarcus Ware all game long? Who knew? But I guess that's why it leads to a sad Cam Newton. I mean, this guy seemed to be scared and shell-shocked from the opening when it seemed like he didn't get no protection. It even led to him being a sore loser in his after-game, post-game interview. But I'm going to give him a pass on that. It was the biggest game he'd ever played in his life. He lost. He didn't want to be there. But he should have sucked it up just a little bit as a professional and stayed there and answered the questions. But like I said, props out to the Denver Broncos, our 2015-2016 Super Bowl champs. And who knew, who knew that Ron Rivera, the coach, wouldn't make any adjustments at halftime? Anyway, that's it. Football's over. It's done. Holla at me in the draft in April. Now, moving on to what I really want to talk about, NBA All-Star Weekend coming straight to you live and direct this weekend. Coming from Toronto, first time in Canada. We don't have two teams up there in Canada anymore. We only have one, so the host team, the Toronto Raptors, will be in full force welcoming all the fans and everybody to the festivities. Now, I can't talk about all the festivities because they're not as exciting. But we'll talk about the starters for each one of the teams. So featuring from the West, we're going to start off with Kevin Durant. Hey, he's still KD. He's still the hardest guy to really go one-on-one -on -one with on the team, or any team for that matter. And also on the starting lineup for the West is his teammate, Russell Westbrook. Look, this guy is explosive. We already know what he can do. Can do. And literally, Russell attacks the basket. One of the reasons why he's probably an all-star this year. Moving on to one of my team members, or should I say the San Antonio Spurs, is Kawhi Leonard to his first all-star selection. The claw will be there because of his two-way game that he's developed over time. Real excited about seeing him in his first all-star action. Now, rounding out the team, our guard Steph Curry. We already know about Steph Curry, right? Dipsy doodah, three-point, can't be stopped. Most dominant player in the league right now. And Kobe Bryant. That's right. The fans voted him in to what will be his final All-Star game. And he will start on the roster. But I'm going to touch on Kobe just a little bit later. Now moving on over to the East. Their starting lineup will consist of guard from Toronto, Kyle Lowry. This guy has went, really went to that team, taken it over, gotten better shape this season. And is playing at an All-Star level. Also on the team is Indiana Pacer Paul George. We saw his horrific injury a little bit over a year ago with Team USA. Now he's back, kind of back to his old ways, and look for him to star on the roster. Also, an oldie but goodie, Dwayne Wade. That's right, he's still putting heat on boys down there in Miami as you still see him doing a few crossovers, dunking, and knocking the dust off of some of those old bones and look for the Miami Heat to actually be a really good team late in the season. Again, another story for another time. Coming on down, Carmelo Anthony. I mean, we really can't get enough Carmelo, right? He's still one of the most prolific scorers in the game. He's on the Knicks right now, still doing his thing, but look for him to go ahead and make this All-Star game special as always. And last but not least, we have King James. I mean, is it really All-Star Weekend without LeBron James? How can you not include him? He's still LeBron doing what he does. Has the Cavs out there in front in the East. Look for those guys to make a deep playoff run. But those two matchups, and not, not a lot of traditional centers. You don't see no traditional big men in these lineups. So that's something a little bit new. The All-Star game going small like a lot of teams are doing. So it should spell for a lot of up-and-down action. A lot of dunks, a lot of tricks, and things of that nature.
One other thing I want to talk about, something else that everybody tunes into, is the three-point contest. Defending champion Steph Curry will be there representing the Splash Brothers, but he won't be alone. The other Splash Brothers are going to be there too, Clay Thompson. So look for those guys to fill it up. And if you ask me, one of those guys are going to probably going to win. But if there was a dark horse, somebody to look out for, I would say it would be Los Angeles Clipper J.J. Redick. Quiet as it's kept. He's been having one of the best shooting seasons that he's had since he's been in the league. He's in a really good situation out there in L.A. And if he finds his stroke on All-Star night, Look for him to possibly walk away with the trophy. And last but not least, the thing that everybody waits to look for, no matter how good it gets, how bad it gets, or anything, it's the dunk contest. And defending champion Zach Levine actually brought a little bit of life back last year. This guy was showing his athleticism, jumping from everywhere, anywhere, up and down and up and under, through the legs. Yeah, Zach Levine, he might be light-skinned, but he's doing his thing when it comes to the rim. Now, if there was somebody who can possibly take the title from him, believe it or not, it'll be big man from the Detroit Pistons, Andre Drummond. Now, look, Andre Drummond's almost seven feet tall, and people usually don't like to see big men dunk, but this guy is very creative and very instinctive around the basket. Look for him to do some creative things and possibly make it a great competition right there in the slam dunk contest. I can't wait. I'll be tuning in. Now, last but not least, like I said, I want to touch on before we get out of here is one Kobe Bean Bryant. This is his farewell tour in the NBA. This is his last All-Star game. Look, I've never been a Kobe fan. I've never been a Laker fan. But one thing I've never been as well is a Kobe hater. I recognize the man's greatness. He has been nothing but great for the NBA, and all his accolades on the court show just how good of a player that he is. If it wasn't for Michael Jordan, we're talking about the best shooting guard ever to play the game. I'll, I'll be willing to say that right now. So my hats off goes to Kobe Bryant. Farewell tour. Hey, man, it's been great. A lot of great rivalry with the Spurs. We usually came out on the short end of the stick, so I was mad. But, hey, Kobe, it's been an illustrious career. Wish nothing but the best for you. Now, hey, maybe you think that the Super Bowl should have turned out the other way. Maybe you don't think that you're going to watch anything from the NBA All-Star Weekend. I would call you foolish, but either way, I want to hear back from you. Let me know what you think. Always contact me, Cliff, at blackvideonews.com. Go ahead and like this video. And before you log off, always love us and stay logged on right here at Blacks in Motion.